Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to click like and subscribe. And if you click the little bell, you'll be notified of future videos when they are uploaded. The disappearance of Stephen Kosher it was midday December 13th of 2009 when Stephen Kosher, who was born on November 1st of 1979, got out of his car parked at the end of a cul-de-sac in the Anthem neighborhood of Henderson, Nevada. Unite, and this is in the United States, I'm sure. Those listening know that. Um, an action that was recorded by the nearby home security camera. After returning shortly afterwards, he retrieved something from the vehicle and walked away with another security camera capturing his reflection in a car window. He has not been seen since, although some activity was recorded on his cell phone over the next two days, including uh, December 14th, he checked his voicemail, and that was the last activity that uh, his phone, that was recorded on the phone. So going over a brief um, timeline, October 6th, um, he... On Tuesday, October 6th, in Cedar City, Utah, it was the fall session of Shakespearean Festival, and Stephen's grandmother gave him a check. However, he refused to cash the check. Friday, November 14th, at Woods Cross in Utah, he participated in a wedding reception, spoke to some of his friends and family. Saturday, November 15th, Bountiful, Utah, Steve had a birthday party with the family. Mid-November in St. George, Jordan, the man who was... Uh, co-renting the house, moved out in the middle of the month and allegedly um, didn't pay the, left with unpaid rent. November 26th, Stephen played volleyball uh, at West Valley City in the morning and had lunch in Bountiful. Um, and he came back to West Valley City in the evening for pie. Uh, November 27th, he went to help a friend with some Christmas decorations. And November 30th, he spent the evening with at the family home for some activities. Between December 1st and 5th, no one was able to reach Stephen. He was now about three months overdue on his rent payments. His landlord leaves message a message on Stephen's parents' home phone. December 2nd through the 6th, he receives a call from his father regarding the messages that the, his landlord left and the overdue rent payments. According to... Um, some of the people who have researched this, he could have been upset and hung up, so it's hard It's hard to know that. Um, Wednesday, December 9th, he visited a friend's family ranch. He met this friend a few years back. However, when he showed up, she was not there. So Stephen spent a couple of hours with her family, had lunch with them, and he apparently told her family that he was thinking of going to Sacramento. Later that day, he was seen at the Ward's Temple Night and was apparently in the same session as a witness who was doing some sealings around 6.30 p.m. The sighting seems to conflict with tr Stephen's travel plans on December 9th and 10th and also conflicts with some bank activity. Later that evening, uh, Stephen speaks with his sister and she did not mention any plans to travel um, and he does not mention any plans to travel to Sacramento and there's no relatives or known friends in that area. On Thursday, December 10th, Stephen and his sister talk again, and Stephen doesn't mention his travel plans. There was a receipt found later that day um, that is off of exit I-15, or off of I-15 exit 261, uh, showing his travels from St. George, Utah to Springville, Utah. So Friday, December 11th, in St. George, Utah, a young man using the same number as Stephen, maybe, I mean, allegedly, or it was Stephen, helped some people who were locked out of their house at the time. There was a receipt found for a purchase of $3.21 at Jack in the Box located at 775 West Telegraph Street in Washington, Utah. Uh, December 12th, a cell phone power tower located near Overton, Nevada, registers a ping from his cell phone. There was also a receipt for a purchase of $18.08 at Mesquite Mart Shell, located at in Mesquite Boulevard, for some snacks and approximately six gallons of gas at the pump. This is just north of the cell phone ping and was 40 miles from St. George. 
Sunday, December 13th, President Greg Webb calls Counselor Kosher, telling him that he's in Vegas and asked to see if Stephen could attend an 11 a.m. meeting at the ward. Stephen says that he's in Vegas, but that he would attend it if necessary. Mr. Webb says he's en route to St. George himself, so he will cover the meeting himself. The call only lasted two minutes. So this is going to be where I'm going to ask the cards what happened or if we can get a scenario from the tarot cards. And might I remind you, this is for entertainment purposes only. And so I just want you to keep that in mind that this is not based on factual evidence. This is just a simply a tarot reading. So let's go ahead. Um, I did some numerology on this a little bit and so what we have here is um, sometimes I like to look at the pattern of their name and so this his first name was Stephen and this would be a one two five four five five and he was born um, 11 1 of 1979, which makes him a 1 for his birthday and a 3, um, what I call the attitude number, the attitude, the everyday personality was a 3. And if we go to 2009, um, this is a 2 year because 9 plus 2 is 11, and, one, and that's above 9, so 11 plus, which by the way, <laughs> 11 matches his 11 month that he was born. But if you do three plus one plus one, he was in a five year, which is very upsetting. You can have, it doesn't have to be, but five years can have, five and nine years can have a lot of upsets. So he was in, he was in a year of upsets and, um, and he was in a year of upsets. So anyway, that being said, I want to pull out the tarot cards and I want to ask them, what what was going on with Stephen that led up to his disappearance? And I'm I kind of would like the cards to tell like it kind of in a sequence type of order, but you never know. Sometimes the tarot cards go all over the place, right? So what led up to Stephen's disappearance? What what led up to it? So this is I feel like I have to go down here. Um, oh my gosh. Well, I didn't expect this card to come up right away. And I do want to preface this by saying the tarot, I, myself, my personal belief is that the tarot was not ever designed to predict death, ever. Not on any level, anywhere. Some some other readers may predict death. I never will predict death. I will never do that. Um, so that being say, said, this would be the card of doom and gloom, like not seeing a future for yourself not seeing a future for yourself. This card is, um, you know, the person's laying there like giving up and they they don't see, they don't see a future for themselves. Let's just call it that. Um, so obviously that would be a major depression and maybe even thinking that could be that, he, yeah, so here's, here's financial trouble. So what happens with this card is the Four of Pentacles and the Four of Pentacles is being tight with your money, having to be tight with your money and, you know, not really being happy about it. This is kind of what I call my, my crabby card. And so then uh, what happened after that is it is, wow, these cards are really telling this in a progressive way. This is the depression card, folks. And this would be uh, someone who, and actually this can be the hidden depression um, he could have been trying to hide his depression because that's what cloaks. It's the cloak. Uh, I'm looking at a bridge and a river. I don't know why. I do not know why I'm honing in on a bridge and some water. I don't know why. So I just let that pass. Okay, and then we have um, the story progress progressing. So this is... Um, the Page of Swords, this is just about messages. It can be a younger person, which, you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't look at what age he was, but um, this can be a younger person. Um, and depending on what cards come around it, which I have to find out, 
this we don't know what this card is talking about so let's find out okay so this is people so there is so this is this is being around people so he was like around people all the way to the end of when he disappeared so this is definitely this could have been a father figure this could be family this could be siblings this could be you know being in contact with people okay so um that's what that would be and then i'm going to bring these cards out and kind of reshuffle them and lay them back out again and see what else we have going so this would be people praying for him or people so he must so praying for him and this is the financial card i don't know if his if other people knew that he was having financial problems i know his family did somebody was saying some prayers for him but here he is feeling trapped like he honestly didn't want to be bailed out by people like he's still trapped even with an offer of help like she could have somebody could have been offering financial assistance because here's somebody focused on the money here have some money and they're like no and they run they it's like they don't want to have any financial um assistance there and wow this is like the, to me this is like driving around the, in the cities you know there's the cities driving from city to city and this is this can be like a medical card so maybe he had gotten to the point where that depression actually became like medically depressed or affecting him physically this could have affected him physically with the uh chariot and this oh i think i read somewhere where he went um because he admired he a uh, young woman um i don't know if she was just a close friend i don't know what their relationship was but that was a place that he drove and she wasn't home so he stayed for two hours at the family and this would be reminiscing of the past and maybe he was going to have an exchange with her you know because this is very loving a very loving and giving card um and nothing else on there flags me so um i'd like to ask the tarot to bring us up to the day where he parked at the cul-de-sac and left what what was that day what was going through his mind that day secrets this was a secret plan this is the high priestess so he, this was a well-kept secret wow uh this is the secret card so he was planning something but it was definitely a, a secret so he he and even to that day he was pondering what to do so this is kind of the pondering card gosh that even kind of looks like the terrain back there maybe um but this is pondering what he should do about his finances he just didn't have he just didn't felt like he didn't have any control over his finances so here he is pondering and then he left this is leaving eight of cups you've got everything in your life going for you you've built up a huge entire life and you just ditch it all you walk away from it all you're like i'm done this is like i'm done so he just walked away oh this is for entertainment purposes only okay but this could be going to spirit at his own hand the hand coming out of spirit going to spirit which would tie up with this card he, that he just wanted to end it this is this is looking to me allegedly like a suicide that um this is looking to me like a suicide what do you guys think um you can leave your comments below if that happened i it's very tragic and i I mean, even that the family doesn't have closure um, is tragic because, you know. So let me just ask um, a different deck. I'm going to pull out a different deck and say, um, is the family, are they ever going to find him? I'll just, that, I'll leave it at that because I'm not going to make a prediction that he is dead or alive. You can come to that conclusion yourself. Um, but. I just want to know, is the family ever going to have any kind of closure on this? Is the family ever going to have any kind of closure on this? Wow, not for a long time. Notice how he's up above the clouds. 
He's up above the clouds flying free, flying free. And this is the money problem, folks. This is not being able to handle money. He felt like he couldn't handle his money, and now his spirit is flying free above the clouds. So he's free of all that burden. Just make, you know, it really makes me want to communicate with him if he is passed away. That would be so highly controversial, depending on where you stand on this case, because I don't want to um, step on any toes of the family. You always want to use the highest level of sensitivity in cases like this. Um, but I just, you know, if he's out there, if, he, if, if Stephen's out in the spirit world and you want to communicate, so this would be for entertainment purposes only, allegedly, um, do you have anything to say, Stephen? Do you have anything to say? This will be interesting. Always oh, wounded, and he, um, oh, so he, he just felt wounded and lost, like his, he lost his strength. And look at, he's in spirit now. He lost his strength. But there was people that tried to help him. There was people that tried to help him, very compassionate people that tried to help him. But he it's almost like he couldn't recover from he couldn't he didn't know how to recover from his situation. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this was this was tragic for him. This is someone who really can't face their life, see? Like they can't face their life. There's just so many problems coming at them from so many directions that they don't even know where to begin putting their life back together. Um, uh, I'm going to be so sensitive about this. Is um, uh, Let's see, how can I ask this and be respectful? Is there anything that you want to say about your last, you know, about when you disappeared? Is there anything you want to say about after your disappearance? Let's just put it that way and leave it open-ended. Is there anything you want to say about your disappearance? This will be interesting. He's defiant. He's like, nobody would have changed my mind. I am defiant. <laughs> he was defiant. Look at that defiant look. Uh, I had made up my mind. There would have been no changing it. So that's the defiant card, okay, and then, so he was defiant. Nine of Wands. Why is there a foundry on here? What does that say, foundry? Is that a foundry? Yeah, foundry. Makes me wonder if there's a foundry in the area. Um. And like this is, cloudiness and I and I think there's a clock up there this is a very interesting card so I'm not sure if this is a clue why he's looking or if he's saying that people looking for him uh, that's very interesting and let's just see, pull one more card and see if there's anything else that he wants to reveal because I never want to uh, pressure anybody um, I wonder if he drank a specific type of coffee, like if he had a favorite coffee, because I'm really honed in on that coffee cup. Um, and really he said, you know, like he was a hard worker if he could find the right fit, but it's almost like he never found the right fit. This is the working card. And this is like, okay, I'll try this. 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 And then look at all the smoke in the background. That's just, it's just like everything going up in smoke. Like he just couldn't. He couldn't master uh, what he wanted to. Why are those, what are those little things on the table? Little colorful things. See, I notice things like that in the cards, and then I go, what is that for? Because uh, sometimes there's clues in there. Um, okay, so if we did communicate with him, that's all that he would want to reveal, and then I would just be thankful for them coming through normally, but this is allegedly. And I'm going to do a final pull on the cards to see what we have to know about uh, Stephen Kosher. Is there anything that we have to know? Uh, meaning anyone, yeah, this is, again, this is the Knight of Wands, fired up, 
you know, he was fired up, knew what he was going to do. And that's also the wands. That's the spirit card. That's, oh, that's a father figure. Wait a minute. The knight of wands with the king of cups. Wait a minute. Did his father pass away? I got, I'm sorry, I have to Google this. Um, but we've got somebody in, possibly in spirit, with a father figure on these cards. So Rolf Kosher, Steve, Stephen's father, died fe in February of 2011. Wow, this almost, folks, this almost 2011. Now that's weird because he was born in November, which is 11. That's very weird to me. Uh, I mean, I'm for a numerologist, it's not weird. It's just as a numerologist, I pay attention to that. But this looks like if he went to spirit, he was greeted by a father figure. This is allegedly, all allegedly for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And um, yeah, this is this is folk in this is a page of wands and uh, focused in the spirit world. Wow, that's really coming and above the planet. <laughs> See his feet on the earth. I mean this. I mean you can't. You there's too many things in here that are interesting because flying high, flying high in the sky and off of the planet, but being now being a master of his life. Now being a master of his life. So with that, I would like to thank all of you for joining me, and um, we'll send a great deal of prayers out to the family and friends of this beautiful young man who tragically um, is still missing. And I'm not going to come to a conclusion if he is, you know, on the other side or not. This is just a reading, uh, a tarot reading and interpreting of the cards. But we certainly wish the very best for the family and everyone involved. And I want to thank you for joining my YouTube channel. You've been great. Now, when I pull these cards, I like to show them because you guys might see images on those cards that I don't happen to notice during the live. So if you do that, feel free to comment and say, Melanie, did you realize when you pulled this card, this particular card, that there was a scene on it? And maybe you should pay attention to this because the tarot cards are really good about giving um, either metaphoric or symbolic messages uh, and signs. And they're, I mean, they are a symbolic system. So uh, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for listening.